Hey guys, welcome back. Carter, bits be tripping. Let's get into this right away. So obviously we've been tracking what's going on with the Ethereum network. There's been some pretty big announcements when it comes to China pools. And we're just looking at the data. We're looking at the network. I'm looking at what, how is this going to impact people that are mining and what to look for and where to look for those results. And you'll start to see kind of the impacts to that. If you're in that geographic area and you watch this through a VPN, you're obviously tracking what you need to do with your rigs at that point in time. If it's that you're gonna have to shut down and sell, or if you're just transferring them to another pool and playing this kind of how long can I go till I have to shut them off type of thing. So let's peel this back. We're going to take you today's sponsor and then we're going to get right into this. Decentralization is one of the most important factors in a global cryptocurrency network. Bitcoin's proof of work functions due to the exceptional security provided by the miners of the network. Today's sponsor is Compass Mining, a company with a customer focused experience, providing a tailored approach to purchasing, hosting, or even an at-home option, allowing anyone the opportunity to participate. If this interests you, head over to compassmining.io. All right, we're back. So where to start with this? So obviously we've been tracking on mining pool stats. It pulls all of the different pools together and gives us a common view of what's going on in addition, it gives us a good view of where's the hash rate going. And I've had quite a few comments on the last video that we had a couple days ago where people are like, they're just going to repoint where those miners go. And I want to get to the, the genuine issue at hand here. So if China has banned mining and just an outright ban of mining, we did see this in May with Bitcoin. There was a huge drop off. Some of those facilities were massive, 125 plus megawatt coming offline. You saw 47% of the Bitcoin network drop off and kind of a big bang. And then you saw a quick shift of that equipment to go to countries that were not banning it. And there was capacity in space with Ethereum mining. It's a little different. You have a little more distribution. It's GPUs. This could be throughout all of China where some people are just doing it at home, just like we do here in the US and Europe and South Africa, South America, around the rest of the world, essentially, where you have a pretty decent distribution of GPUs. And then you have some of the bigger farms that have maybe a placement of A6 out there. What we're seeing on some of those larger placements and those larger farms, the you know two, three terahash farms, Right now we're just redirecting. So it's gonna be kind of a game of whack-a-mole for the Chinese government. Obviously, if they're trying to push this, they're just gonna go back to who's using the power. Who's the top talker as it would be on a network? Who's the top power users when it comes to being able to trace where the where this is coming from? It's pretty obvious unless you're using something like immersion from a sound standpoint, you know, where you can't hear it and now they're just gonna to have to look and who's using the power. But I can see this happening if you're looking at a staggered withdrawal from the pools right now over the next couple months. So I'm going to put a soft target on this for November 1, where we'll see most of that hash rate come out of Chinese pools. You might have some rebels out there doing um, some VPN games if they feel confident that whatever providence they're in, you know, they're not going to get, you know, the boot um, on them on it. Large pools are going to have a power footprint that's going to be uh, going to be seen. So, is that distribution going to go through VPNs? There's, uh, you know, also an issue if you do even do a trace route, and I encourage people to try this just even at home. If you trace route, which if you just drop to a command line in Windows and type trace rt space. And then you go to these different pools, you can trace route the route from your house all the way out to where that endpoint is for those particular pools. And what you'll find is like if you trace route F2 pool, there now it looks like a lot of their front end and their hosting is in the US. So they will have other pools that you can connect to that are in Asia and in, um, in Europe. However, most of these things you'll see if you trace one out to current where something that's in China, you're going to see 200 plus milliseconds. 
So for people that are going to be, you know, going the rebel side and putting VPNs in in China and still mining to other pools, you know, they're they're risking um, exposure, obviously, because they're using encrypted connection and, you know, the local uh, IT, you know, if it's a, you know, cable company or anybody that's giving them service, will see this encrypted connection. If they pair that cryptic connection with a huge power usage, they're going to use two and two. It's pretty, it's pretty easy to find heavy power users. It's very hard to find. And this is part of the big thing of why I like having, um, you know, making sure people understand on how to mine at home because your power footprint's a lot lower too, is that you have that, that decentralized network, a lot more spread out and a lot more participants makes the network more stronger, harder to take it down. So this is a, kind of a test of how that environment will work for folks in China that are just trying to, like any of us, participate and are being impacted by their government on this. What we're going to see is as these pools start shutting down, you have that 200 millisecond timing if you're using a VPN. They are going to be competing and losing a lot more shares. They're going to have a lot more orphaned shares. That's why you want to try to mine to the closest ping that you have. Effectively, your GPUs are doing work that each one of them get a work package and they are working on that difficulty level that's submitted to them to work on that work package. And then they submit a share saying they are completed back to the pool. And that's how your contribution is calculated at a pool level. So if we if you're, uh, you know, in a country that they're trying to lock it down and now you're using a VPN and you have to go to the next country over physically in their case would be like Southeast Asia pools, uh, Taiwan, um, those areas, they're pretty close geographically. That's where you're going to start to see a possible bump in hash rate. And you're going to see that some of this hash rate will come off. It's going to transfer. Hardware is going to transfer, but you're still going to have more than likely people in China mining just to Southeast Asia pools because the ping won't be as far for them. But we'll, you know, we'll see if uh, one of those pool sides start to come up in a level for obfuscation purposes, most of these pools just claim world because they have locations all across the world. You know, they have Europe connections, they have uh, North American connections, South American connections, um, Middle Eastern connections, and um, Asian connections, right? So they just, they have that world globe on uh, mining pool stats because depending where you're at, you can go to that closest thing. So we're already seeing the net effect of what's happened to this pullback when it comes to, you know, the total hash rate coming off of a spark pool, but it's transferring some of it's transferred over to B pool, which has a later date of turnoff. So the quickest flash to bang, if you're in China is these folks are just moving their, their mining rigs over the pool, over to the next pool that lets them mine a little longer before they have to shut down. But I think the net, sum of it is going to be, you're going to have all of these Chinese pools probably down by November 1st. And then it's going to see your total network hash rate. And we'll kind of zoom into that kind of spot there. Right now it's setting at 754. That's almost all time high. So it's kind of a, a transfer to some pools and then more have came online, more equipment has came online. And now we're at almost 754 total tear hash on the Ethereum network. Um, will that come down to the 430 or so uh, tear hash once all this equipment is offline? I think it's just be seeing the behavior that I'm seeing right now. It looks like they're running them up to that last point. I haven't seen a decrease, so there might be a big bang um, time frame. I mean, I've, I've had a couple different solutions or options here of what I thought would happen, where you would have this natural. Some farms are just going to decide I'm not taking the risk. I'm going to sell the equipment before there's a market dump, and they try to move the equipment, uh, get it off, you know, out of the country, offshore get it to a place that's probably not charging a 25% tariff and then try to sell to people, you know, across the world that are looking to buy this equipment. From what I'm seeing right now on the network, that is not happening. We're over 754 Terra hash right now on Ethereum's network. And, you know, we'll make sure that you guys can see that. So we can see right now the numbers that I'm seeing 754 total network hash rate right now that's known is about 723. The delta between 754 and 723 is a single farms mining to their own node, 
which they would not be going to a pool. So if you have a large farm that has 20 terahash, which is a lot of terahash, um, hut, hut eight, as an example, has a very large, uh, Canadian, uh, based hash rate, um, farm. And that is probably hut eight, um, uh, because they do not broadcast on, um, their pool as a known known. So that Delta could be hut eight as we're seeing it. And, Again, now we just saw another uh, ping here of a drop, and now it's just dropped 100 tera hash. So, I mean, it, as things are adjusting, we will start to see. I mean, that was a pretty significant drop right there just on this this uh, video that we're looking at. and just clicked in uh, 634. So 100 tera hash coming off of there, a little over 100 tera hash. But that could be some of these things swapping from one pool to another right now. Um, bottom line, this is a fluid situation. This is what you guys should be looking at, watching. Tweet to me if you guys are on Twitter. Let me know what you guys see. I'm trying to follow it just like everybody else right now of what's going on. But make sure you're liking, subscribing, following. We're going to uh, bring a more regular type of video to you guys, not just like this trying to tracking and news. This stuff's important right now because it affects your yields. So that's why I keep talking about this particular point. We're going to come back to a machine that I got running here with some 6600 XTs and uh, the 6900 XT and show you guys some results that we did with that recently. But uh, like, subscribe, share, and I will catch you guys on the next one.